Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you my review of Grid Plus's Lattice One. Now the Lattice One is a fairly new hardware wallet and I'd say it's one of the more expensive options on the market. So as you can see here, the Lattice One currently retails for about $350, uh, but that said, you can redeem 75 grid tokens to get $100 off, and I believe that only costs maybe about $10 to $15, uh, so basically you'll probably end up spending $250 to receive a Lattice One. So the real question I want to answer in this video is, is it better than a Ledger or a Trezor um, in regards to the user interface and security, etc.? So in addition to my review of the Lattice One, I'm also going to be talking a little bit about the Grid token. Now Grid Plus is going to be proposing an entirely new technology, um, and so I can't wait to explain that to you guys. Uh, there's very little information online, you actually kind of have to hunt through the Discord to read more about it, um, but that's something I'm going to briefly touch on as well. Now before we get started, I do have to give you two quick disclaimers. Uh, the first is that I did actually reach out to the Lattice One team and I requested a device to review on my channel. They were very kind and were happy to send me uh, a device as well as uh, two safe cards, which I'll explain a little bit about later. Uh, but in addition to that, one of the team members actually got in a video call with me for about half an hour and basically just let me ask him any questions I had about the security of the device, etc. So definitely worth keeping in mind that I didn't actually pay for my Lattice One. Uh, but that said, I'm going to do my best to give you guys an honest review of this device. Now, the second disclaimer, and this is the most important one in my opinion, is that I'm not a security expert. So best to do your own research there and confirm um, everything I'm going to tell you about the security of this device. So first, just to give a bit of an overview of what to expect, um, as you can see here, this is the Lattice One. I'm going to show you some B-roll footage of that in just a bit. Um, but just at a high level, you can see you have the device here, and that device will actually store a seed phrase for you. Now this device itself can actually connect to a forked version of MetaMask that the Grid Plus team has put out. And I imagine this is how most of you all will be signing your transactions. So basically you'll submit a transaction on MetaMask, a signer message will pop up, you'll hit sign on your Lattice One as long as you approve, and then the transaction will be executed. Now in addition to that, every Lattice One comes with one of these safe cards. Um, as you can see here, you also have the option to purchase two additional safe cards, or really as many as you want, for $40 for two. Now each of these safe cards can be used to actually back up and protect a seed phrase. You can see I have my pack of two here that the team sent me. Um, and so basically what you would do is if you've created a wallet on your Lattice One, uh, you have a couple options. Uh, the first is you can just leave that be. Uh, the second is you could back it up with one or more safe cards. So to do that, all you would do is push in the safe card and then hit back up to safe card. And now that seed phrase would also be stored on this protected safe card. Of course, the safe cards are protected by your pin number that you set. Now, right off the bat, for me, this is a pretty big advantage to a ledger or a traditional hardware wallet, uh, because basically you can just purchase one device here, and then you can purchase as many safe cards as you want to continue creating backups. So a good option here is that you have your wallet on your Lattice One, and then in addition you have your two safe cards backing that up, and they're stored in separate locations that are secure. Now I just want to quickly go over the features and components page they have, um, just to point out a few interesting things there. So of course the big main feature um, that you'll see in just a minute when I show you the footage is that there's a five inch touch screen here. Um, and so that makes it just a lot easier to use than the ledger. Um, with the ledger, if you're familiar, basically you have these two buttons and you have to click through selections with the two of them, which is a little cumbersome. Now next up is a really cool security feature that you'll actually see when you set up the device for the first time. So you can see here, this is a image I took when I was setting up my device for the first time. And you can see that there's a notice here that the Lattice One physically secures data with an anti-tamper security mesh. What this means is that if the Lattice One is opened or tampered with in any way, um, the Lattice One will automatically delete all private keys, wallets, and secure data, and the device will essentially be bricked. So if something happened to your device, if it was tampered with, etc., cetera, um, you could purchase a new Lattice One and then you could retrieve all of your addresses um, and your private key after you put in the safe card in a new Lattice One. Now, next up, they basically go over many really cool security features. Um, I am not going to go through all of them, uh, but I will link this below if you want to read more, and I definitely recommend you would. I think you'll feel really confident with this uh, wallet after you read through uh, some of the technology they built in. Now, if you do end up purchasing this, um, the setup is actually very easy. So I think most of you will probably use this MetaMask unofficial Grid Plus fork, um, and I'll show you that here. That's what I have installed personally. So a couple things to note here. Uh, the Grid Plus fork is simply just a fork of MetaMask that adds Lattice One connectivity. 
Now this works really well for me and I haven't had any issues. I've actually replaced uh, my traditional MetaMask plugin with the Grid Plus fork. The reason I feel comfortable doing this is because your seed phrase never leaves your device. Um, so it never gets sent to MetaMask, which is just an extra layer of security. It makes me feel a bit more comfortable um, when I'm using my computer for different things. So if you just use MetaMask, uh, basically MetaMask actually stores your seed phrase on your computer. Um, so if a hacker was able to access your computer, it is possible for them to recover your seed phrase. Uh, but with the benefit of a hardware wallet, your seed phrase never leaves the device, which is another added layer of security. So now that I've talked a bit about the device, I just want to show you what it's like to interact with it. So I already showed you how the safeguard works, but I did want to highlight one security feature that shows you how much thought was put into this device. So here I'm entering in random guesses for the system pin, and each time the screen refreshes, it's jumbling up the numbers. So this would make it hard for someone to visually see what you're typing in or identify any wear and tear on the device. In this clip, I'm attempting to submit a transaction via MetaMask, and here you'll see what the message that pops up on the lattice looks like. Uh, so basically, I just have to hit submit for the transaction to go through. So all in all, now that I've given you my thoughts about the Lattice One, I have to say that I definitely recommend it more than a Ledger or something like a Trezor. There's a few reasons for this. Um, the primary reason is really the safe card system. So you can purchase one device and then back it up as many times as you want with these safe cards, which is a pretty low cost option. For me, just having one ledger doesn't seem that secure. I'd probably have to end up buying two if I wanted to trust this with all of my assets. And at that point, it just makes sense to get a Lattice One and a couple safe cards. Now, the second main benefit of the Lattice One is it's just a pleasure to use with the touchscreen. I can't speak to the Trezor, but if you've ever used a ledger, you know what it's like clicking through with these buttons. Everything just takes a while and you really don't want to actually do anything or sign any transactions uh, because it takes so long to cycle through the menus and, and click around. I also really like how the Lattice One just kind of sits on my desk and that's its permanent home. With the Ledger One, it's it's basically the size of a USB stick and I think there is some risk of losing it there or having water damage or just some issues with it. Now, of course, if you don't like the idea of having your Lattice One in plain sight, you can basically have a dummy wallet on your Lattice One with no assets in it and then all of your real uh, value, whether it's your Ethereum, Bitcoin, ERC-20s can be stored on a safe card and you can have that backed up and in a few different secret locations. But from a user experience, experience perspective, the Lattice One is just such a breeze to use and it's so much more convenient and it's a better experience. So I'm now in the process of migrating all of my assets and LP tokens, etc., to my Lattice One. And I will of course have multiple backups on different safe cards that are stored in secure locations. Now, all of that said, all of the benefits here to the Lattice One, it is worth noting that at the end of the day, you have to protect your seed phrase um, with any of these devices. I did talk to the team about this, of whether they felt comfortable actually just basically destroying their seed phrase and just having maybe a few backups on safe cards. And that is because these safe cards are backed by a pin, so you could easily memorize that versus having to memorize a 12 or 24 word seed phrase, which is probably impossible for most people. And I think the consensus there was like, yes, you could probably do that, but I think in practice, most of you are still going to want to save and secure your seed phrase, uh, myself included. It's something I will always have protected. So at the end of the day, all of these hardware wallets are going to have that point of failure. If your seed phrase is compromised, if you lose it, etc., you're really going to be vulnerable. Once you have a good system for securing your seed phrase, at that point you can then start to think about using hardware wallets to protect uh, your assets. Now lastly, I was going to talk about the developments uh, behind the Grid Plus token or the Grid token. Now this information about the Grid Plus token is public, uh, but it's not really that easy to find. So I do want to just briefly highlight the changes that are going to be happening to the Grid token. Um, and if that's a reason that you'd want to be interested in possibly investing in it. So the Grid Plus team looked at a few different models in the past. I believe the most recent one was some type of energy rebate in the state of Texas. Now they have since abandoned that and they haven't made too many announcements about it, but they're actually going to be pivoting to a peer to peer anonymous transaction network. You can see here they have a website, it's called Phonon. Um, I will link this below. Um, they do have a learn more button here, which just links to an older blog post. But the bulk of the most up-to-date information on this peer-to-peer off-chain anonymous payment system is actually in their Discord. Um, so you can see here I'm on the Grid Plus Discord, I'm on the Phonon channel, and they have a pinned FAQ message about what Phonon is. So the Phonon network essentially allows users uh, with secure hardware to do peer-to-peer -peer transactions of their crypto assets. And this would be gas-free, it would be private, and it would be instant. Um, so this would be very, very cool. This is something that they're targeting in Q2 of 2021, so it's definitely coming up. 
You can see they also have a GitHub link if you want to learn more about this technology. They also have a brief comparison to Tornado Cash, which I'd recommend you taking a look at. Um, there's some pros and cons to both, but again, this is really cool technology, and I think when they release this, it will actually have a very big impact. So just at a high level, what they're going to be proposing to the community would essentially allow the grid token to govern this peer-to-peer -peer network. The details, of course, have to be hammered out and there isn't too much publicly available information. But if you're interested, it may be worth taking a look at the grid token and then what they're building here to see if that could be a good investment for you. Now, again, you're probably going to have to buy the grid token on Uniswap if you want this device just to get that $100 discount on the lattice one. So uh, while you're doing that research, maybe check out the phone on network and see if that's something you're interested in as well. I also want to mention that if you're interested in a lattice one, I have a referral link below. So if you do end up purchasing a lattice one, it does help me a bit. Um, no pressure to do that, of course, but if you want to, it's there. Now, with all of that said, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Please feel free to join the DeFi Innovation community. It's been a great resource so far. Uh, please like, subscribe, and then hit the bell if you want to be notified. And of course, thank you all so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.